Next, I'd like to introduce Ilya Fadiev, who's an experienced software developer here at Batovi. Uh, in his talk, he's going to show us how to apply functional programming principles to write better code. Um, he's going to discuss what monadic composition is and how you can use it to write your modules in a more functional way. Uh, Ilya, the floor is yours. Thanks, uh, Jason, for introduction. Um, I have a more traditional background myself as well as for my presentation. And uh, I would like to talk about monadic composition, which is uh, one of the patterns of functional programming. Okay, uh, so we'll touch a little bit on the basic uh, concepts of functional programming, which are pure functions and function composition, and dive into what a monadic composition is. The most of this talk will actually be uh, recording exercises, so I'll go over the uh, terminology pretty quickly. So, um, pure functions. When you, uh, when you work with functional languages, you often can see that um, they <coughs> refer to a term called pure function. So what are the pure functions? I have to cover this, maybe it's uh, well known for everybody, but uh, still. So the first example, uh, it's a function that takes one argument, x, and uh, basically the result of this function is the increased value uh, by five. So this is a pure function because it doesn't, oh, I forgot to say what uh, the definition of pure, pure function. So essentially this is uh, si simply, simply a saying it's um, a function that doesn't do side effects and the result depends only on the input. So the first example is definitely a pure function because we just do the calculation and we don't depend on any, anything else. So the second one, <clears throat> here we can see that when we call the function, it calls another function called SQRT and passes the argument to it. So this one depends on the actually implementation of this SQRT function. If that function is pure, then our function is pure, is pure as well. So in this example, I meant by SQRT, I meant to calculate a square root, uh, a square root of a number. So in this example, this would be also a pure function. And the last example um, uh, is the next. So here, uh, given a number, uh, we return, we are, we are calling a method now of object date and subtracting the uh, given input. So this is not a pure function because uh, the result of the date now, of the method now, uh, which is a timestamp, current timestamp, uh, and it's different every moment. So uh, uh, if, if we call this function with the same argument multiple times, we will be getting different results. Okay, let's move on to function composition. This one is the most important and most interesting, at least for me, concept in functional programming. So in mathematics, um, composition, uh, function composition is basically an operation that takes two arguments, two functions, and produces uh, a new function. And the way it works, in this, in this uh, example we call it C, and the way it works is that the argument we pass to our composition function uh, first uh, gets passed to a function f, and after it calculates its result, uh, we apply function g on, on the result of function f. And this is what function composition is. So, uh, now let's uh, talk a little bit about monadic composition. So the term <coughs> monadic um, comes from <coughs> a design pattern that is used in functional languages called monad. So basically, um, the pure functions are not supposed to do any, uh, not supposed, uh, don't do any side effects, uh, but in real life programming, we have to deal with state, we have to deal with asynchronous uh, calls, and to help functional languages out, um, a monad was invented and it's exactly designed to deal with side effects, keeping your main functions pure. Uh, we won't use monads, but we'll use uh, some uh, benefits that monad, monad brings into development. So a monadic composition in a, in a brighter, in a brighter way, uh, sense is a design pattern that allows you to write programs in a more abstract way 
by taking away some boilerplate that your program logic requires. And the trick there is that you are building your, applica appl uh, your application by composing uh, using function composition and you compose your functions. And uh, inside this composition helper, you do some extra gluing that your program requires. So you basically do all the side effects there and your functions can stay pure. Okay, and now let's dive into code samples. I forgot to track my time anyway. So uh, for this um, exercise, we will write uh, an accounting application using function composition. So first let's, uh, let's uh, define two functions, two pure functions. And first is called add five, which just adds five to the, uh, to the input. And the second is called double, which doubles the input. So the way I want to define my application is using composition. And I want to compose these two functions together. So now let's implement the compose helper. Right here, it's uh, pretty straightforward. So basically, it does take uh, two arguments, which is uh, two functions, f and g. And the result of this will be a function. That function uh, is a function of one argument. It takes x and returns and basically applies these two functions one after another. So uh, when we uh, execute our application, we, we call it, it's a function, and we give it a, a, a value, three, and uh, the result that will be shown is 16, so it's three plus five, double, double. So uh, this is a composition of two functions, but let's a little bit uh, generalize um, uh, generalize the implementation and allow us to build applications with more than two functions. So in this case, I have three functions. So now the implementation of the Compose helper will look uh, a little bit more comprehensive, but essentially it's just a loop over an array of functions that we want to compose all together. And um, the value will be passed through all these functions as in a pipeline. And uh, when we call it, it basically essentially gives us some result. Oh, the interesting, the fun part here is that, okay, I can define my application, but of, what if I want to write another application that does exactly the same as my previous one plus something else? With this, with the same implementation of the Compose Helper, I can do the following. So I can just compose my previous application with um, the next set of functions that I, I want my application to, um, to, to, uh, to perform and this will work so now so this was a pure what's called mathematical function composition let's look at actually what a monadic composition oops, what a monadic composition is so the second example uh, let's extend our requirements so that our application doesn't just calculate the result but also it should explain how this this result was calculated so essentially, uh, it's supposed to give us like a kind of a log of uh, which functions were called so that we can see how the result uh, is calculated. So for this, we have our three pure functions defined here. Uh, but instead of, <clears throat> instead of um, a func uh, our functions return just the result, uh, we'll extend uh, their output and uh, we will return a pair so basically an array of two, of two elements. The first element will be the uh, result of the calculation. And the second uh, element will be some description. So <clears throat> now I, we, we still want to compose, to build our application exactly the same way using function composition. Uh, but let's see what we have to change so that it will work for our case. So the way we will call it is we just call a function and that would be the result. We'll prettify it a little later. So on the right-hand side, uh, I just uh, put the previous version of our composition. And let's see what we need to change. So um, the default value for our um, array reduce uh, method was uh, the value that we <clears throat> passed to our application. 
Now uh, we extended exactly the same, uh, in, in the same manner how we changed the signature of our functions. So we'll pass a pair of uh, our x with just an empty string because we, we, we are not doing anything yet. So inside the reducer, in, inside the reduce method, uh, so the first argument is, which is an accu accumulate, uh, accumulator. So uh, because we changed uh, it's uh, like the way, the way, the way we uh, structure it, we have to uh, destruct uh, this, uh, this parameter into, into an array of two arguments. And now we can use it. So basically the value that is, uh, is the first item, we can pass to the uh, function uh, that's current for this iteration. And we know that the result of this function will be a pair. So we will uh, destruct it right here into uh, two values, x, x2 and description two. And now when we return our result, our accumulator result, we will construct now this, uh, this pair. So the first one will be the calculated result. And the second, and the second item will be uh, our, like the exactly what uh, we need for this, um, for, for this uh, requirement. So we'll just concatenate the accumulated description with the description of the function that we just executed. Okay, so if, if we do this all together and we run it, as you can see um, here, uh, we will get a pair of two, uh, an array of, of two items, the result and the string. So pretty easily we can um, prettify um, uh, the, let's say the, the, the runner function uh, using some kind of like runner function and it will produce us, us like a very nice and clear result that basically satisfied our original goal. Okay, um, yeah, so uh, just uh, to repeat it again. So uh, in the previous example, we looked at original mathematical composition, function composition, and here we are using a monadic composition, which does something extra according to the logic of our application. So uh, another, another example would be to how we can use uh, asynchronous functions in, in this composition because uh, this, the previous example was pretty simple. Okay, uh, let's introduce another uh, base function. We call it async op, which performs some asynchronous operation. So in JavaScript for uh, asynchronous um, operations, we we'll, we'll use, usually we use promises. And the way promise uh, works is that um, when, we, when we create a promise, we won't get the result right away. The result will, um, will be um, resolved eventually at some point. For example, when you do like your call to your API or to your database. But what promise gives you is an interface to get to the result. Um, so uh, there is a method then that's available for your promise. And uh, this method allows you to access the result that eventually gets there. Okay, so uh, let's see how we still want to compose our application exactly the same way. So these were our original functions and I want to use the asynchronous function here without, without basically changing anything in the definition of my application. But for this, I would have to uh, re-implement uh, the composition. So on the right-hand right -hand side, it's the original implementation. And now let's see what we need to change. So uh, because, so, what, so for this, what we would have to do, uh, we would have to kind of like lift our simple functions into the next level. We don't have to change them. But um, so when we pass, when we pass the, original value, we have to wrap it into basically an empty promise so that we can work with it the same way as if it were returned by an asynchronous function. So accumulator inside our reduce function would be now a promise. And to work with it, we exactly need to use the promise API using then method. And inside here, we can have an access to the actual value and we can pass this value to the next um, element of the array uh, of our composition. 
So with this implementation, uh, yeah, we can change a little bit of how our run, uh, run, uh, run function can look like, but eventually, uh, so when we, when we get it and we, and we um, run our application, given it's the value of five, it will give us the result 117. Okay, and so that was the second example. And let's say we want to combine these two. This is the last one. I won't get into uh, more details here, but I'll just show you sh show it off here. So basically we have all our functions here and we want to, to combine these two requirements together, being able to use asynchronous function and being able to provide the explanation of the computation. So this is how the compose helper will look for us, uh, will look like for us. So you can see that here it, it uses the uh, destruction of the, of the accumulator as well as it, um, it knows how to work uh, with a function that uh, gives you a promise. So, and the cool part here is that, yeah, we have to define this compose function, but the way we construct our application stays exactly the same, so no difference here. And we can combine applications uh, by composing with other applications, and this completes the examples. So let's recap. So what monadic composition gives us? It allows us to construct our application using function composition, which is a very clear and straightforward way. And by the way, um, when we uh, use this way of um, defining our functions, you can notice that there is no, usually when you define a function, there are, you describe arguments. Here you don't describe arguments. So this style is called point free. Point means like an argument and there is no arguments we're describing here, uh, which um, some can, can see as a great benefit of uh, making code less buggy. And uh, uh, what monadic composition does, it hides, uh, sometimes it might be a very comprehensive boilerplate. It just hides it inside the implementation of the compose helper. And the uh, benefit here is that these helpers can be tested, developed separately. And uh, when you build your application, you can focus on building the actual functions and just think about like uh, how you can compose them for your application. And we end up with a better structured code. So basically this completes uh, my talk. Uh, I, put, I put some links together uh, if, if anybody is interested in reading more, and there is one example of like real, uh, of a project that use, uses monadic, monadic composition. Okay, I'm open for any questions. That was great, thank you, Ilya. I have a question, actually. Um, do you find yourself writing your own composition functions frequently to, to build things, or do you end up um, do you use like other libraries that have like common patterns of different things that need to be handled and then reusing those? Oh, great, great question, Jason. So uh, in, in everyday programming, I do find myself um, building my functions as a compos uh, using composition. And usually uh, like there is, you know, there is a low dash library that gives you uh, a set of Lodash, Ramda, there is a bunch of uh, functional libraries uh, that allows you to do, to do all this. Uh, I do use this for my day-to-day uh, -day job, uh, but in terms of monadic composition, yeah, you would have to look for a specific use case. And the example I'm giving here, that was a project where we built a transaction builder um, for a blockchain. Cool. Any other questions for Ilya? Not really a question, but the pipeline analogy was helpful for me, Ilya, to think of it as like things just passing data from step to step in a pipeline. That was cool.